Enjoy the show. Five, four, Enjoy the show. Three, two, Enjoy the show. Run. Enjoy the show. Both would have been at slightly different stages of life when the original uh, Hunger Games books and films came out. What was your relationship with them, and why did you want to be a part of the Ballad of Songbird and Snakes? Um, yeah, well, the original Hunger Games book was probably the first book I ever read for fun that I couldn't put down, um, and. Uh, I got to see the movies shortly thereafter. I was really, really into the movies. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, it's, it's a pretty crazy full circle moment to be a part of this franchise now. Um, as the dust is kind of starting to settle after we filmed it a year ago in Berlin, it's, it's wild to look around at everybody and be like, wow, we, we really did it. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I was a huge fan of the books in middle school, and I, I think I got into the books not too long before the actual movies started started happening too. Um, and the and the movies, particularly like the costume design, just like deeply affected me. Um, um, so it's pretty wild to just fully be inside of that world for this movie. Absolutely. Josh, how do you think this movie speaks to the world of 2023? It seems like we've maybe reached peak reality TV in a way that we hadn't 10 years ago when the original films came out, and authoritarianism doesn't suddenly seem that far-fetched at this particular moment in history. So uh, this is a credit to Suzanne's writing, which asks a lot of questions that are, you know, personal and introspective and existential, and I think one of the big ones kind of pertains to the media spectacle surrounding the Hunger Games, which um, we get insight into the tributes, the participants in the Hunger Games, who have families and lives and communities that they get pulled away from. But um, there's another demographic in the capital that it's, it's entertainment to them. It's, they're so separated from it and disconnected. There's no uh, pull to recognize the humanity in these people. It's, and I, um, I think that, you know, the movie does a very good job and the book at kind of shining a light on that and, and how despicable and hypocritical it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Hunter, it feels like your wonderful work on Euphoria and now in a big blockbuster like this have been big steps for trans representation in an industry that hasn't very been, been very good at showing that. Mm -hmm. How important are these conversations to have and how does it feel to be a big part of them? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an honour. I know for a fact that little me would have loved to have seen what I do now in, uh, like, in, in the media, it's, and, uh, you know, I had figures that I looked up to who, um, uh, who definitely, like, changed my life, and, uh, and, you know, I hope that I can do some of the same for that for people who are younger and looking to the media to, um, to find some sort of, uh, sense of, like, solace or, or, or some sort of reflection of themselves, you know? Yes. Josh, you've obviously worked with the wonderful Rachel Zegler a couple of times now in very mm -hmm. different movies. What do you admire most about her as an actor and a person? Um, she has this access to her emotional well um, as an actress that is something like I've never seen before. And I am very jealous because uh, she is able to just drop right into whatever she needs to do or be almost instantaneously it's it's unbelievable and she's just a treasure to have around she's a she's an amazing professional i i have i have so much admiration for her as as an artist in person fantastic all right well look thank you both very much for your time much appreciated thoroughly enjoyed the film and all the best with it thank you, thank you. let me ask you one final time what are the hunger games for Hanging to